Hiya folks. So in this video I'm going to cover how to move a site from a remote to a local, although you can use WPCLI for many different varieties on the theme. Um, so I've got a version of um, uh, WP Shout on my local install, but it's broken in a couple different ways. Uh, the primary one is that it's just out of date. Um, so what I'm going to do, and we'll actually notice some of the files or some of the uh, article images are missing. Um, so what I'm going to do is basically export the live version of the site and pull it locally. And um, then we'll see the current version on my local, which we don't right now, as we can see side to side. So what does that look like? Well, the first thing to do is that I've got, so I've got in this window up here at the top, I've got, uh, I'm SSH connected remotely into the command line on that server. So I've got WP CLI installed there. And so what I need to do is WP DB export. Uh, we'll call this WP shout video. Video uh, dot MySQL. So I'm going to export um, that, or no, dot SQL, sorry. Uh, so I'm going to export the database. Uh, yeah, I forgot that word. I'm going to export the database onto that file. And then what I'm going to do, still a typo. So I'm going to export the database onto that file. And then once that's done, I'm going to move all of the files including those images and stuff down locally. And I'm going to use a utility called rsync to do that. I've already got the commands stored in my command line, but this is a bash prompt on my local machine. And so if you look at this, I've got this command that I'm about to run that says rsync avz. It's a bunch of flags you don't need to worry about. I need to connect through a non-standard port, so that's what the dash e is for. I'm going to exclude my wp config because that'll break my local database setup. And then Otherwise, I'm just going to pull in all the files from the remote folder into my current one. And I actually did this earlier, so I'm, I'm only going to need to pull in some quantity of the media files and stuff. Um, and so that'll kind of run for a while. Uh, the, nice, the really nice thing about rsync, as opposed to most other things, is it is progressive. So if I hadn't gone through and explicitly um, deleted these media files, I wouldn't need to pull them down. I won't need to pull down all the plugins and themes every time because any existing ones that haven't changed at all using rsync in this way will prevent you from needing to deal with. So that's a really big benefit of doing it this way. Um, this will actually take a couple more seconds, so I'm going to actually jump cut. Okay, so we're about done pulling all the files. And so you remember that we... Uh, we exported the database into this specific file. So the next thing we're going to need to do to finish the import is actually pull in that specific file using WPDB. So, or sorry, using WPCLI. So that'll look like WPDB import. And then I call the file that we'll see up above, wpshout-video.sql. And so doing that import will replace all the credentials and everything else locally. So you might need to log in again if you were already logged into the local install, but you're basically gonna totally replace that file. The other thing is that you will, by default, um, potentially need to do a search and replace. So once that's imported, we should see that the, the uh, so I've got a, uh, we've got running on uh, the remote, version of WP Shout, we've got a force SSL on, but I don't want to do that because on local development, I don't care about SSL. So what I'm going to do is actually deactivate the plugin without having to touch the database. And the easy way to do that is I can move the plugin folder um, to a different folder. I actually have a quick guide on WP Shout about that, but it's a very uh, convenient little hack to know about. So if I move that, I need to actually give it a double underscore because I already did that trick once before. Uh, so with that, if I take the HTTPS out, uh, my local um, directory will stop complaining. Um, and now I'm getting a 404 error. And that's because, as I expected, I haven't searched and replaced in the database, so none of the stuff is found because it's looking for the wrong URL. So for that, I need to use uh, WP search replace 
you might think it's hidden under the DB. I made that mistake in an earlier recording, and it's not. You'll, it's just a raw command. So I'm going to change wpshout.com into http colon localhost 8088 slash wpshout. And that'll run through, and as you'd expect with any search replace command or tool that you've maybe used on WordPress in, in the past, It'll just find all the database entries and correct them. And it'll actually tell you in this kind of convenient table where it found them and how many it changed. So with that, I expect that I will see everything looking good. And indeed, now if I compare the live to the local version, I basically see no distinction other than that I'm logged in on the live and not on the local one yet. Um, so I could log in, but basically everything is set up. So what we did, we did a WPDB export on the remote server, and then we pulled all those files in locally, including the exported file. We re-imported that exported file from the remote server, and we then had to search replace to match the URLs. So three WPCLI commands and a long wait on rsync, and you've got a remote server replicated on your local environment, which is pretty cool. You can also use that to do migrations between different hosts that both run WPCLI and let you access the rsync command, which is pretty much all of them. So it's a really powerful thing to know about, and it's honestly much faster than any other way you can do this via GUI, but it does require familiarity with the CLI. Hopefully that's helpful.